Welcome back everybody to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage and you are looking at, at a rather strange angle, uh, but uh, you don't need to adjust your, your, your monitor, you're actually seeing this at the right angle. I have the Singer 1591 that I introduced you guys to uh, what, several weeks back maybe. Um, I am actually uh, beginning the overhaul process and I'm, and I'm specifically showing you two showing you the machine at this angle for a reason. You'll see here that I, <clears throat> if I pull back a minute, you can see the whole, it's kind of the whole machine on its side. <clears throat> but I did this because I wanted to show you an angle that's a little different when it comes to the feed dogs. So uh, I've mentioned, I think before, that when you're getting ready to clean a machine and you're trying to figure out, okay, where do I start? you typically want to begin in the upper areas of the machine, right? You want to start at the top and work your way down. And there's a, there's a, there's a reason for this. You might think, well, what does it, difference does it make? I'm going to do every section. I'm going to get it all clean. But, you know, normally your machine is, you know, is upright, which is fine for it to be upright. However, um, you know, with gravity, the dust falls. So, for example, uh, I am getting ready to do the feed dogs. I'm going to clean those and talk to you guys about that, as well as, of course, the shuttle area right here. And but there's a there's kind of a uh, an order that I do this in, and it's just to simply prevent more work. For example, if I go and I clean out my feed dog area uh, and get it all nice and clean, and some some of you may do that. You may even start oiling it, and then oh, I forgot I got to do this area here. And as soon as you start cleaning this out, you can use a vacuum if you have a small vacuum attachment like I do, but still the vacuum won't get everything and you're gonna to need to go in, as I did when I was cleaning this area, with a limp brush and that dust is gonna fall down into your feed dogs, which you have just you know, painstakingly cleaned and maybe you've oiled down here. <clears throat> so again, I just thought I would remind you all, it's a really good idea to start with the upper areas first, get those clean, because any dust that falls, of course I had the, the needle plate and the bobbin plate in place, which helped keep some of it from falling, but um, <clears throat> your best bet is to go ahead and again, get the upper areas clean. Now, you'll notice that unlike um, uh, another uh, other 15, Singer 15s that I've cleaned before, or the Japanese copies of those, uh, over the years, Singer would eventually change or update the way uh, the shuttle, uh, the shuttle, the, the hook, and the bobbin case, this whole area, the way it assembled. And they made it a little easier, and I'll show that to you in a second. But um, another thing you'll want to do before you start cleaning the feed dogs, and again, many of you will have the machine upright, but I kind of wanted to to give you all a, a, a sort of a view of this, if I can get this uh, camera to zoom in. I wanted you to get a view where you could see both the top of the feed dogs as well as the shuttle and the uh, hook area all at the same time, right? So if I'm if I'm showing you the feed dogs up above, you're not going to barely be able to see this, and and I'll hopefully it'll make sense as to why I'm doing that, uh, not just to make you dizzy. So. <clears throat> in, a, in an older, uh, I think it was maybe my Singer, uh, I think it was the 15 uh, treadle that I recently overhauled. But in any case, because that treadle is a lot older than this particular 15, and as I told you, Singer kept a lot of their design elements in place uh, when they worked. Well, the older 15 from the treadle, I think it was a 1905, 1906 model, I have to go back and check my own video, um, you had to unscrew, you would take, you know, a, a, a screwdriver and you would unscrew a couple of screws that would then allow you to remove the race cover uh, and then get to your hook and so forth. Well, by this point, when this 1591 was made, uh, Singer had switched that to a different system. So I'm going to just turn this thumb screw here, which is actually, uh, I didn't have to fight it, it's, it's actually loose. Or not loose, but it, it moves freely. So I'm loosening that, and when I do, <clears throat> this little retaining, it's like a retain clip, if you will, comes off, and you'll see that, what do we have here? We have, oh, some 
some lint, dust, and even a little bit of oxidation. It could be oxidation or it could be old oil here on the lip, but that's going to be, we'll be dealing with that. Um, we'll get that one moved off of there. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to know. It could be old oil, uh, a little bit of rust or both, but again, these were steel and they were plated, but the plating wears over time. But uh, this will clean up fine. I'm not worried about it by the time I use any alcohol and then metal polish, it should clean up. So, uh, once that is off, you'll notice that we have other pieces under here. So now this little <clears throat> rim piece, I'm going to call it a rim piece because I don't have the exact name in front of me. It comes off. And of course, oh, now you see all the gunk behind there. This is oily lint. Um, it's old lint that has gotten oil mixed in and it makes for a really thick goo, which is not good for your sewing machine. Does the machine run? <clears throat> I probably could have stitched with this machine with it like this, but again, the machines were engineered to be serviced. That's when they are really at their best. So you want to do this, right? Um, this clearly needs cleaning and I'll be cleaning that up. Okay, what else have we got here? You know, I'll be able to get back here and get, uh, well, even more uh, lint. Look at that. Some of the, some of the oily uh, lint is uh, stuck and it fell off there. was stuck to the side. Again, held on and worked its way down into this clip over time. It took, you know, probably years for that to happen. Now, what is left here? We have the, the hook. Now, if I want to take the hook out, I can remove this piece right here this yet another piece and it has two screws but if I come around with the hook I can actually take it out without removing this now that doesn't mean you can't remove this but I don't actually have a reason to at the moment and of course you guys have seen me do this before I'll be taking my cotton swabs of which I go through many and I'll be cleaning the hook you say well what's wrong with the hook it looks fine well not if you start um, delving all it takes is a is a cotton swab and a little alcohol and of course when you start going underneath here you're gonna see all kinds of goo this is old oil and lint maybe a little light oxidation and again the whole hook should be clean it might not have been clean in 50 years so were these machines designed really tough so much so that they work even when they haven't been serviced sorta of, kinda yes <clears throat> they have the strength but again, a sewing machine is in some ways a precision instrument. And if you want it to, to give you its best, you need to take care of it. It's like anything that was designed to be maintained. The more maintenance you provide, um, uh, the better the results you're going to get and the longer your machine's going to last. Okay, now what are we looking at? I'm just moving the hand wheel with my hand here and you can see the shuttle. Oh, what a dirty, filthy shuttle. This is... This is remarkably filthy. Take the, uh, the clean end of the cotton swab and I'll show you guys. Um, wow, that's a lot of dirt, old lint, and old sewing machine oil. That's just, and I mean, I haven't even gotten it all off yet. I'm not gonna make the video of me, just you guys watching me clean the hook here. Because what you're doing is you wanna get, again, and I'll go through, you know, as soon as you fill up your uh, cotton swab, you know, just swap it out for another one. Keep keep the cotton swabs coming. Uh, and again, uh, I like them because I can dip them. I just dipped it into my little jar of alcohol here. Typically, it will hold it. As long as you don't go splattering it, it holds the alcohol very well. So that, you know, when you're in other areas around the machine, you, uh, you can avoid spilling alcohol in your lacquer, in, on your uh, lacquer or shellac Japan finish here, because it will instantly destroy it. Um, and I'm not, I'm not embellishing. It will instantly melt it, I promise you. I've <clears throat> learned this the hard way. Here I see a, a thread remnant. This is not unusual to find in here. So the goal, you know, we say, hey, we're going to clean the feed dogs, clean the lint, but it's a good idea to see what's going on in your feed dog area, your shuttle area, because if this area is not happy, if there's something, something amiss here, it's going to affect your stitches. You know, people say, ah, oh, why is my machine not stitching? Well, this could be one of, there are many reasons, but this could be one of those reasons, right? And then, uh, again, 
you can come, you can flatten the cotton swab or use one of the little pointed, um, those specialty cotton swabs you can get. Now, I think the Q-Tip brand has one. They're uh, pointed tips, you know, they can get in slightly smaller spaces. But you can flatten this with a screwdriver and then get it. And you can even come in underneath the, the shuttle here, right? You can actually get under there and get any goop that might be on it. That's uh, one way. Anyway, I'll do more cleaning of this, but this, uh, the feed dogs is the, is the thing I wanted to show you guys. I, I don't even know if I've ever done just a video on feed dog cleaning, but now you'll notice that I didn't, I was showing you how dirty this was, but actually, ideally, you wouldn't take the swabs like you just saw me do, and I'm going to tell you not to do what I just did. Um, you don't want to clean down here first. Remember, you start above because... Again, I can take a vacuum cleaner and I can pull at this. Sometimes the lint is so caked on though, you need to, the vacuum will get some of it, maybe a lot of it, but not all of it. So look at this big clump of, this is like almost, it's almost felted in a way. You know, old lint, you know, it just keeps building up, building up and the machine keeps, keeps um, people keep sewing with it. And it, every time the feed dogs and the, fabric and the and the sewing foot meat more of it gets compressed down there and uh, boy uh, this one hasn't been cleaned in a long time sometimes people just forget you know the machines moving and sewing and they're just not paying attention and or maybe someone borrows it and they don't know and maybe they don't know how it's very easy to do it's not hard uh, in fact it probably takes more time just getting the plate plates off uh, I took the bobbin plate off. You don't technically have to, but I took it off anyway because I've, I've got a little lubrication technique there that I'll, I'll show in a different video when I put the plate back on. But here you can see, again, more of this stuff. Just, you know, sometimes you get a little bit. Sometimes it's caked on there. Sometimes it's just, it's just you know, you can't even see your feed dogs. There's nothing but fuzz. And so... What I'm doing here is I'm taking this, this is a little dental tool that I purchased at a flea market somewhere. You guys have seen me use it before, and I'm just gonna kinda pull, uh, again, just pushing and seeing what I can get to come off of here. Um, and then on this end, you see more, you'll see it on the sides. Notice right here on the side of the feed dog. Look at this, all this, all this lint built up over who knows how many years. And again, uh, you don't you don't normally want to wait till you have this much, right? Because if you t if your lint is uh, okay, hold on, let me see. I want you guys to see this huge chunk of lint that's about to come up. There it is, right there. You guys see this right here? It's like a giant dust lint dust bunny. <laughs> there it comes. In. There's more of it. And it keeps coming. Um, normally, it's very possible that sewing machine oil, when someone went to oil the needle bar, if you put too much and the oil drips, uh, sometimes that happens when I'm restoring a machine because I'm trying to get it uh, primed with more oil than you would normally use in a normal, just periodic oiling. Uh, anyway, that oil can drip down. And some people mistakenly put oil in the feed dogs, not knowing that they're not supposed to. Uh, in any case, the oil mixes with the lint and it creates this kind of a kind of a matted uh, kind of a matted mess. Now notice I'm going to come in here and I'm going to oh, turn the machine at a different angle so you can maybe see it slightly differently, kind of above from the side. Now there's a space you have a tool like this is very helpful because you can go in the individual teeth. Uh, sometimes you'll have lint build up there, and then there's, a, there's like a slot here on the on most feed dogs and certainly on the singer. Now watch what happens. I'm gonna push down, I'm gonna push and see if I can remove what is basically got sort of wedged in that little space between the feed, the feed dog teeth. Maybe I come up this way and see if I can get it out. But it's, like I say, it's just matted up. Why is this important? Well, Remember, your feed dogs are all about friction. That's the con that's the, the the mechanism that allows your fabric to move. All sewing machines feed fabric in one way or another, and this is 
Let's see if I can get that out. See what I just pulled out here, guys? Well, let's see if it, well, it fell down there. I just pulled, if I can get it up here to show you, I just pulled this much lint. Once it came out, it kind of got fluffed up here. But it was all sitting right in, well, I got more of it still. I've got, you know, I can tell that there's oil in there. There's more of the dirty stuff falling out. You can see where it came out of here. So what I'm trying to do is get as much of this. You should be able to get all of it out, actually. I say as much as you can. I Normally, if you just get in here and get working. Now, eventually, uh, when I'm finished, I'm going to don't wanna zoom in even a little bit closer than what I've got here, you guys. Because looking at feed dogs on a camera is kind of weird. I'm hoping to get a decent... Uh, okay. So I'm basically pushing, you know, in these little crevices to see what I can, what I can dislodge here. What's what's in here? What's not? Wow! Now I don't know if you guys saw this. I was pushing this in, and now there's this huge flat sheet of lint moving. <laughs> Holy cow! Look at this, guys. It just, it's it's funny sometimes. You know, you start you start trying to get lint out of here. Now. If you have difficulty getting lint out of here, of course, if you notice here, there are two screws, one here, one here. The feed dogs can be removed. You can remove them. You can, usually I find there's not really anything underneath there because it's, you know, it's, it's screwed down fairly snug. But if you're not able to get all of this cleaned, you can, you can remove the feed dogs. Be really careful. Don't lose your little screws there. And then you can take them out and you can clean them underneath if you want, or, uh, and you can get to this surface. I normally find that I can get all of my feed dog areas cleaned. Here it is, here's more of it. Here's more of this big sheet of stuff coming out. The boom, there went, there went uh, another chunk. Here, I'll pull, pull the camera back so you can see, you can see, uh, I keep getting this pile of lint going. Here's here's more of it. There's it. There it is. Ugh. It just, <laughs> you know, it really is amazing how strong these machines are. They actually still sew in spite of all of this, you know, just lack of maintenance. There's some stuck in here. Now I'm going to look and see if there's anything behind that that upper that's this upper piece I was telling you guys we can certainly remove it you can do that you can unscrew it it's not hard I don't think I really need to demonstrate that on the video but but uh and you'll notice with my little tool here I'm getting underneath the feed dog and you can see more lint moving and escaping out of there <laughs> um, and it's it's really surprising just how much of this stuff can 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 get lodged in there and, it, and it'll stay for years decades um, until someone either notices the machine's not sewing as well as it should or having problems feeding the fabric um, and then they'll someone will hopefully get these feed dogs cleaned and here's another piece of that flat layer of feed dogs. I mean, of, uh, excuse me, old lint. And there's, there's even more. By the way, you know, one of, I've, I've often tell people that when you get a machine that has been overhauled, restored, and is ready for you to use, or maybe you've gone through your own machine. Uh, maybe you've found a machine or bought one or someone gave you a vintage machine. You're trying to get it going, get it, get it running. Um, <clears throat> once you have gone through a process, like you see me going and just pulling out more and more and more, eventually, once you've gotten everything set, whether it's cleaning the lint or whether it's oiling the machine, Normal maintenance, for those of you who are just using these machines, you know, you've gotten them in good shape and you want to keep them that way. Uh, cleaning your feed dogs is not hard. It's not that big a deal. Uh, it doesn't take as long as what you're seeing here because this machine is just overdue, right? Now, 
Uh, if you need the space, I'm, I'm going to take out the old needle because I'm replacing it anyway, and that'll give me just a little bit more, a little more space there. And I've got the needle bar all the way up. Now, what you can do is take your lint brush once you've gone in and gotten the big, the big stuff out, and you want to get a brush that you can get down into these spaces. And <clears throat> this has nice bristles on it, and they're stiff enough that they can actually uh, really get in some of these little, little crevices, and I can see stuff actually getting pulled out that was um, not coming out with my little tool there. So you have, you know, it's kind of, you have multiple things you use. Um, to, to get this stuff out. <clears throat> but normally, when you go to clean your lint, uh, uh, clean your feed dogs of lint, you take your lint brush and you come in and you, you know, you can just sort of, uh, you can vacuum it out. It, it won't take you very long, or you can even just uh, blow it out if it's not a ton. And that's really, you know, you're not really, you don't have that much more to do with lint cleaning. Like I said, you know, we can, you can take out the feed dog itself. Um, and whether that's faster or not, I don't know. The, the main thing is you want to make sure that you've gotten it as much as you needed to. Now, notice that the feed dogs, of course, they, they, they rise as, you, as they go through this, this, the, um, the, the cycle of the machine rotating. And you want to make sure that you have the feed dogs at the highest point because you'll notice I can get under there, right? I can get under there with my brush. If, if, you're, if you're not paying attention and your feed dogs are in the down position, it's going to be harder to get lint out from under them. I know that sounds kind of obvious, but you'd be surprised. It would be easy just not to even be aware of that, especially if you're new to this. Okay, so if you ever do that and you think, oh, wow, that sure made it easier, don't feel bad because that's how you learn, you know. Uh, machine's patient. It will sit there. It's probably waited decades for someone to clean the, the, the lint out of the feed dog area, and it'll, it'll still be waiting. So, um, But that's... Uh, yeah, you know, I'm I'm inspecting here now, and I don't see any more lint. Um, now I can take my uh, a little uh, cotton swab with alcohol, right? And because I have old oil that I don't want it to attract, you know, oil attracts lint and dust, right? It's like a magnet. That's why you want to be very careful about oil or grease in this area because it it can make your life. Uh, well, you'll spend a lot of time cleaning lint because it, it, it wants to stick to the oil. So I'm just taking the alcohol and removing any, any excess oil. Uh, small, and now metal polish or small amounts of oil are very helpful uh, to prevent oxidation on a, on, a, on a part like this. But you don't, you really want to just, if you do, oil is going to cause some attraction of dust. If you need to seal the metal, just do it with a light film and then buff it really well. Uh, or you can use a polish and buff that. So, see, I want to get want to get those uh, little area of old oil out of that crevice there. And now I've got what I believe. I can go back with my tool now and just sort of you know, is there anything here left? I'm not really seeing anything. So that is cleaning of a really nasty feed dog. Now that I've actually done that, and of course now you can see I can go ahead and go on. I was showing you guys this before, but this is the order. I would get the feed dogs cleaned. Uh, right, so I've cleaned. I've cleaned the needle bar, pressure bar area, now I've gone to the feed dogs, and now it's time. Uh, I went ahead and took out, that was the reason I wanted you guys to see me taking this, this whole this assembly apart. If I had left these, these various parts that you guys saw me taking apart, they would have been, they would have been getting uh, the lint and dust falling on them, and I'd have to even more to clean. So I just took them out to make it just a little bit, just a little bit easier. And, uh, and so now, like I said, I, I can go in here, I can clean out uh, the race, which is that rim, right? That's the rim that your hook uh, spins on. 
and I'll go back in here and clean out, you know, clean more of my shuttle area. This area where the flat, uh, where these, where these retainer plates, uh, the, the, the little flat area that they sit on, I'm going to want to clean that with, again, alcohol on the swab. And then I'll go back and I'll clean these. Um, like I say, it's just a matter of alcohol and uh, cotton swabs. You guys have seen me do that before. But again, <clears throat> uh, feed dogs. Uh, when people say clean your feed dogs, they really mean it because now when I go to do my test sewing later, I should get fantastic feeding by this machine. The 15 is one of the strongest machines ever made for domestic use. And now the feed dogs don't have to do their job, you know, uh, buried in old lint, which reduces, um, you know, the, the friction surface, the biting surface of the feed dogs. Anyway, guys, I thought I would show that to you. I was thinking about um, trying to think of videos I haven't done. And, and if I have the machine here, a machine, then uh, I'm happy to do them and kind of give you guys an idea. So, again, most of you, when you're cleaning your lint, if you do it regularly, it's not a big deal. It doesn't take long. Um, but if a machine has been sitting for a long time and has gone a long time, not sitting for a long time, but gone a long time without any, you know, lint cleaning, you know, you can end up with, you know, a, a giant clump. <laughs> and it's just, um, like I said, it adds friction. It, 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 it makes the machine have to work harder to do uh, its job, and there's no need for that. So uh, be good to your machine. It'll be good to you guys. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have other questions about feed dog cleaning or what the best way is to go about it, just put your comments there below and we will see you in the next video. Take care.